This is News 8 Now, this morning. And I certainly hope from my own view that they will find that that 1849-era statute is against or does not uh, comport with our state constitution. That's why I was proud to support the Inflation Reduction Act to finally provide some relief for Wisconsinites and hold big drug companies accountable for prioritizing their profitability over the people they serve. I think that a marching band adds a lot of excitement and energy to the events that they participate in. Um, whenever you're at a parade, the crowd lights up. Um, the students love performing at those events and they kind of feed off the energy of the crowd. Good morning, everyone. That was your morning eye opener. I'm Dua Star. And I'm Derek Sibley. It is August 10th, 2023. How are you, Derek? I'm doing good, you know, adjusting that body clock uh, from the vacation last week. So, yeah. you know, coming back into the swing, th swing of things is a bit tough sometimes, but I'm making it. I'm it's surviving. It's free Friday. You'll and that too. I yeah. feel like when you come back, mm -hmm. it's like that week just goes so slow. So slow. And I feel like that's where I'm at right now. But soon, before you know it, it'll be Friday, and exactly. then it'll be the weekend, and yeah. then, you know, you can just catch up on your sleep, catch up, sleep just, all weekend. Exactly. Relax this weekend. Hey, there's preseason football coming up, so I know you're excited for your Bears. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Stop. All right. Well, in the, on that note, we'll talk about uh, some patchy fog that we're dealing with here uh, right now across the area. Current visibility levels are looking a little bit low here in some spots. Uh, we are tracking that here for you this morning. So if you're getting ready for that morning commute, make sure to use your low beam headlights. Definitely not a bad idea to do so as some spots are looking a little bit low in terms of visibility and also you want to reduce your braking distance, especially for those of you in Black River Falls at two miles, uh, Sparta currently at five miles. And in the meantime, your current temperatures as you head out the door this morning as well, 50s and 60s. We got 58 in Sparta, 64 in La Crosse, 59 degrees in Eau Claire. And satellite and radar things, as far as things go on the satellite and radar, just looking at a few passing clouds. But other than that, uh, conditions remain pretty quiet here this morning. After that fog clears out, so we're going to turn mostly sunny here today with afternoon highs into the upper 70s to low 80s. A quick check on your algae report. The weed is medium, ragweed is low, mold is high. Same forecast again tomorrow. And expect the weed symptom index level to rise as we head into this weekend as well. Stay tuned. We'll have a check on your full weather forecast in just a bit. I will time out the fog here for you and all that more as well coming up in a few minutes. Dua. Thanks, Eric. Well, let's get to some news this morning. After three days, the reverse waiver hearing for the 15 year old charged with killing Lily Peters is now over. News 8 Now's Michael Germain has the details from the Chippewa County Courthouse. The decision whether the teen boy charged in the death of 10 year old Lily Peters will remain in adult court or be returned to the juvenile system is now in Judge Stephen Gibbs's hands. Today, testimony focused on the rehabilitation and whether or not the 15-year-old suspect could alter his behavior after therapeutic services. Retired professor James Garbarino told the court the suspect would be better suited for a juvenile detention center due to past history. He also argued the juvenile centers provide better support and rehabilitation for therapy compared to an adult facility. Any, any respectable juvenile system would continue the treatment as long as their and their professional opinion thought it was necessary. So that alone would suggest that the juvenile system is better set up to provide intensive therapy for one boy like this. Michael Germain, News 8 Now. Judge Gibbs will have until January to decide. We have an update on emergency water line repairs on La Crosse's 4th Street that started on Tuesday. A water valve from 1925 malfunctioned, causing emergency repairs that forced part of 4th Street to go down to one lane. The nearly 100-year-old valve shuts off water, but yesterday it would not completely close. That's according to Pete Medinger, the city's interim assistant water distribution superintendent. The malfunction caused damage to a basement. Crews had to dig down to the water main for the emergency repairs. Menninger says the work on the valve will end today. Administration and service faculty at Winona State are heading to the picket line. Staff members will picket near the university today to rally for union 
priorities. The group has been in contact in contract negotiations since April until the state stepped in on July 25th. Earlier this month, union members voted to authorize a strike if Minnesota didn't meet the union's demands for living wages and an equity and compression study. The strike will start today at 4.15 p.m. at the corner of Main Street and Broadway. Wisconsin Senator Tammy Baldwin was in on Alaska touting federal law that lowers prescription drug costs for seniors. Baldwin toured the Gunderson Pharmacy, which has launched a 12-week pharmacy technician training plan. The Wisconsin Democrat is celebrating the Inflation Reduction Act passed last year. Baldwin says she was happy to support that law because it provides needed financial relief to seniors. That's why I was proud to support the Inflation Reduction Act to finally provide some relief for Wisconsinites and hold big drug companies accountable for prioritizing their profitability over the people they serve. The law gives Medicare the power to negotiate lower prescription drug prices, caps the out-of-pocket cost of insulin at $35 per month for seniors, and requires all vaccines covered under Medicare Part D to be completely free. Senator Baldwin also stopped in La Crosse where she described her ambitions for women's rights. News 8 Now's Jeremy Wall was at the event. We have another crisis right here in Wisconsin and across the United States, and that is the lack of access to comprehensive health care in reproductive care. At a campaign stop in La Crosse this afternoon, Senator Baldwin didn't hold back. We heard from a woman whose water broke at 17 weeks. Doctors consulted the lawyers. The lawyer said the only exception is for the life of the mother. She's not dying. At the Wisconsin Supreme Court, access to abortion is taking center stage. We will still live in a country where your rights and freedoms depend upon your zip code. The senator's remarks come less than a day after Ohio's Republican-controlled legislature failed to pass a measure that would have effectively blocked pro-choice politicians from securing access to reproductive health care in the state's constitution. And I certainly hope from my own view that they will find that that 1849-era statute is against or does not uh, comport with our state constitution. Yesterday, long-shot candidate Rajani Ravindran announced her plan to run against Baldwin after top-named candidates Mike Gallagher and Tom Tiffany pulled out. Baldwin showed little concern about the newcomer joining the race. Attorney General Josh Call has also filed a lawsuit seeking to overturn the 1849 abortion ban. That lawsuit will go before the liberal majority state Supreme Court at some point. Representative Derek Van Orden held a press conference at Gunderson Health System. Van Orden is a part of the Congressional Agricultural Committee, which is pushing a bill to fund emergency services to rural areas. $600,000 would be given to Gunderson Health Systems. That money would allow Gunderson to buy three new ambulance rigs and hire 18 new paramedics with the intent to use them in rural areas. Currently, rural southwestern Wisconsin suffers from a lack of access to ambulance services. Van Orden says having more access to those emergency services will improve outcomes in rural areas. The sooner someone gets medical intervention, the better the outcomes are. That's statistically proven. So when we're 30, 40 miles out, the sooner we can get somebody there, the better the outcome for those people. The bill will now head to full Congress where Van Orden believes it will pass quickly. During the press conference, Van Orden also addressed an incident in late July where he reportedly yelled at Senate pages. There's a group of young people in the Capitol Rotunda, which was used as a field hospital during the Civil War. Folks were, I think, acting in a manner not commiserate with the space. Is the exact same geographic location where all the presidents have laid in state. I asked them to knock it off, and they chose not to immediately, and then they did, and we carried on with the rest of the tour. Van Orden was also asked about the canceled Town of Campbell meeting where he was supposed to talk about PFAS. He said it will be rescheduled but did not give a date for when. The La Crosse School District is officially inviting bids for the now closed Lincoln Middle School building. Organizations can start submitting requests for proposals to buy and redevelop the 100-year-old building. 
Last month, the city's Common Council upheld the building's historic preservation status, which would restrict how some developers could go about a redevelopment project. The school district's goal is to sell to a qualified, re qualified developer who reflects the community's priorities. Proposals are due September 20th. We'll have information on where and how to send proposals on our News 8000 app. A coalition of Wisconsin business leaders is in West Salem promoting pr pipelines as the safest form of fuel transportation. An Enbridge oil pipeline in northern Wisconsin has been moving oil and natural gas liquids since the 50s. Its future is in doubt because a lawsuit says its Line 5 travels through tribal land. Enbridge has applied to the DNR for permission to reroute the pipeline around the tribal land. We believe that Enbridge has proposed the safest, uh, most effective, least environmentally impactful way of moving that pipeline off the reservation. The Wisconsin Jobs and Energy Coalition says Line 5 is a major supplier of oil and natural gas liquids to the whole upper Midwest. The La Crosse County Highway Department is extending a bike trail down a major highway. The trail by the Quick Trip near Kinney Cooley Road will extend down to the Habitat Restore. The department is also going to start work Monday on a bike and pedestrian bridge at Veterans Park in West Salem. Football season is right around the corner, and while high school football in the Cooley region always gives us great games, it also gives us great music. The Onalaska Hilltopper Marching Band previewed their field show at the Onalaska High School football field. The band played Lady Gaga's Poker Face and a medley of pop rock and rock songs. The band director explains the value of having the marching band at football games. I think that a marching band adds a lot of excitement and energy to the events that they participate in. Um, whenever you're at a parade, the crowd lights up. Um, the students love performing at those events and they kind of feed off the energy of the crowd. Despite getting rained out, the show was still a good time. The marching band will take the field again on August 25th, the first home game for the Onalaska football team. The Cooley Region Humane Society is hosting its 19th annual Adopt-a-thon until the end of the month to find both foster and forever homes for local animals. Adopters can name their own adoption fee of $5 or more for all animals available at the Cooley Region Humane Society. There are currently 300 animals in their care. Space may be at a premium, but CRHS is committed to not euthanizing animals because of space. The executive director is hopeful for a sizable turnout. We're super hopeful that we get um, at least 30 yet this week adoptions or at least plans for adoption to start off next week. Um, really looking forward to the public support in this. In past years, the Adopt-a-thon ran for only a few days to a week, but with a high number of animals in need of adoption, the Humane Society is extending the event. If you are interested in applying to adopt a pet from them, we will have a link on our News 8000 app. Well, still ahead on your morning news, one of the biggest streaming services has announced that they are raising subscription costs. We will take a look at how much they are expected to increase. And after a few weeks of rising pri gas prices, experts believe that prices may fall soon. That and more is coming up this morning. For now, we're sending you to break with something to put the good in your morning. Today, Simba is going to be the main event like No King was before, because today is World Lion Day. The holiday was founded to help bring awareness to the declining lion population. It's estimated that less than 50,000 lions are left in the wild due to poaching and hunting to help give a mighty war to the king of the beasts. You can visit a zoo, donate to a wildcat rescue, or by watching The Lion King. Don't go anywhere. Your Consumer News at News 8 Now this morning is after the break. Well, it's still a bit foggy here in some spots, as you can see behind me. Areas like Black River Falls are currently running at two mile visibilities. Uh, six miles currently being reported in La Crosse, five miles in Sparta, and three miles there in Viroqua. So use your low beam headlights, especially for those of you that I just called out here with seeing some of those lower visibilities this morning for that morning commute. Uh, temperatures in the meantime, 50s and 60s, 59 degrees in Eau Claire, but 64 degrees, much warmer, however, in La Crosse. Over the last six hours, we just seen just a few passing clouds. Other than that, again, it's been a bit foggy here for some of us out there this morning. Your zone forecast today uh, calling for highs to be a little cooler behind that cold front uh, that moved through. Highs into the low 80s here today with 81 in West Salem 
and further south, upper 70s to low 80s can be said here with Stoddard at 81, uh, Viroqua at 78, Soldiers Grove with a high of 82 degrees, La Crescent 80 degrees here for you. Uh, Melrose very comfortable today, 81 degrees, Arcadia is at 79, Whitehall at 80 degrees, and Osseo with that high of 79 degrees. And your zone forecast for uh, the Chippewa Valley today, upper 70s with Eau Claire at 79 degrees. Dog walking conditions uh, besides the fog, mostly cloudy this morning, and then we turn mostly sunny for the afternoon. Lots of sunshine continues into the early evening hours as well. But coming up in that full weather forecast, I'll time out the fog here and what we can expect as we head into this weekend in just a bit. In your morning consumer news this morning, watching your favorite Disney, Star Wars, and Marvel content is about to get more expensive. Disney has announced that it plans to raise the cost of subscribing to its flagship streaming platform, Disney+. Plus. Starting October 12th, the monthly price of the streaming service will increase from $10.99 to $13.99. The move comes as the entertainment conglomerate reported revenue declines over the last quarter. Food producer David Oppenheimer has issued a recall of kiwi in 14 states due to a risk of listeria. The recall includes kiwi shipped to Wisconsin. The kiwi were reportedly shipped between June 14th and July 7th. Only kiwi with specific identification codes are subject to the recall. More identifying information is available on the Food and Drug Administration's website. Gas prices rose over the past few weeks, but some experts believe that some relief is just around the corner. Karen Kaifa talks with experts about what has caused the rise in prices, as well as why they think prices are going to turn around throughout August. At the gas pumps, a summertime surge. According to AAA, the national average for a gallon of regular gas is $3.82, still 23 cents lower than one year ago, but it's 25 cents higher than when the summer driving season started Memorial Day weekend. As key states like Texas and Louisiana swelter in the summer heat, refineries have slowed down. Temperatures above 100 degrees have prompted temporary outages and cut supply. Refineries are exposed to the elements, and so refineries can't escape the heat a lot of the time, sensitive equipment that refineries use is very sensitive to triple digit temperatures. Patrick DeHaan of Gas Buddy says at the same time, OPEC has curbed supply to drive global oil prices higher. Some of the heat related issues that now are starting to fade, but overall, the higher price of oil has been causing gas prices to finally rise to uh, some of the highest levels we've seen since last year. A turnaround could be on the way soon. DeHaan says the typically slower driving weeks of August combined with a drop off in temperatures could give drivers some relief for the final weeks of summer. If we can avoid a major hurricane or if we can avoid OPEC making further production cuts or other refining issues, we should see gas prices improving between now and Labor Day. According to AAA, the average price of one gallon of gas in Wisconsin is $3.60. And in Minnesota, the average is $3.81. That's it for your morning consumer news. Let's check in with Derek and get today's forecast. All right, thanks so much for that duo. Looking at some low visibilities in some spots this morning around the Cooley region. I am, I am expecting this fog here to lift as soon as we approach anywhere between around 8 to 10 o'clock this morning. You can see that fog here comes to a close. So just in the meantime, make sure to use those low beam headlights and give yourself some extra time this morning on your morning commute. 64 degrees is the temperature now in La Crosse. Winds are looking calm. Visibility being reported at 6 miles. Meanwhile, if you're in Eau Claire, visibility levels are much better now at 10 miles, 59 degrees with clear skies guys as are your current conditions. Meanwhile, we got 50s and 60s as you head out the door this morning and a check now on your day cast showing that temperatures will be warming up to 77 under mostly sunny skies by noon and still mostly sunny with temperatures at 80 degrees by four o'clock. By 8 o'clock, I'm expecting partly cloudy and temperatures at 75 degrees. Here's a look at the last 12 hours, and we had a front that moved through to give us some showers, even a few rumbles of thunder here that you might have noticed as we head into the late afternoon to early evening hours of yesterday. That front is now positioned to the north. We're getting a light northerly breeze here behind it right now as we speak, and behind that front, it's a little cooler here today as well. Therefore, I'm expecting forecast high temperatures to be into those upper 70s to low 80s come this afternoon. That front is 
is going to continue to make its way down to the south. Just a few passing clouds here for us as we head into the south for noon. However, we're going to increase the cloud cover as we head into this evening, and that's because that frontal boundary is going to stall out here combined with this upper level disturbance moving in from the west, which also could give us a slight chance of showers to work with as we head into tomorrow morning. Otherwise, expect mostly cloudy skies to start here for your morning commute tomorrow. That frontal boundary will continue to stall here as we head into tomorrow afternoon, and I'll be watching this closely because as we head into tomorrow evening, we're watching yet another upper level disturbance moving in from the west. That's going to interact with the stationary funnel boundary, and therefore we could be talking about some showers and even possible strong to even severe storms as we head into tomorrow evening. So something that we'll be watching carefully as we head into tomorrow night and then clearing out of here as we head into overnight tomorrow night. And then come Saturday morning, we'll be looking at mostly clear sky, slight chance of a shower possible here with this northwest flow and a slight chance of a shower near the Chippewa Valley as we head into tomorrow evening. And then by tomorrow night, things come to a close. Maybe just a few passing clouds there as we get ready to head into Sunday. And speaking of Sunday, we may be looking at another better chance of showers here later in the day there. Monday, more chances of showers and thunderstorms. Heading into the first half for Tuesday through Thursday of next week, we're just looking at mixed clouds and sun. Highs in the 80s, lows in the 60s. All right, stay with us. We're back with much more news and weather still to come on News 8 Now this morning. We're taking a quick break with a look what happened on this day in history for August 10th. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Blitz. Just 47 games left in the regular season as the Brewers make a push toward the playoffs. Milwaukee sitting in first place in the NL Central, a game and a half up on the Cubbies. Crew looking for the series win over Colorado. Brewers in some trouble though in the fourth, down four, but two on for Tyrone Taylor. He cuts that deficit in half. He scorches one in the left field. That's gonna go into the corner. Andrew Monasterio comes in to score. Bryce Terang right behind him. Two run double makes it four to two. Two batters later, Christian Yelich is going to find a hole up the middle. That gets through for a base hit. Here comes Taylor in from second. Milwaukee making some noise. It's 4-3. Then in the fifth, Willie Adamas at the dish. This ball absolutely crushed high and deep to left. Adamas leaves no doubt. A second deck shot ties the game at four. Very next batter, Monasterio gets a hold of one. He sends it deep to left center. And in the Brewers' bullpen for a solo shot, it's 5-4. Rockies would tie it in the seventh. Colorado takes the lead in the tenth. Ezekiel Tobar finds the gap in left center. Jerickson Profar comes in to score. Rockies jump back in front, six to five. But back come the Brewers. Former Met, Mark Hanna, coming up clutch for the crew. He drives one deep to center. Bad route from Cole Tucker. That's a ground rule double. Willie Contreras scores to tie the game at six. And then it's Monasterio sending the fans home happy. This throw is low to first. Hanna's going to come in to score, and the Brewers make it two out of three over Colorado. They get the walk-off win 7-6 in 10 innings. Milwaukee's off today. They'll start a three-game set this weekend in Chicago against the White Sox. Could my Mets play spoiler and help the Brewers out? They were taking on the Cubs last night. Jeff McNeil goes yard in the sixth. That gives New York the lead. 3-2. Mets would tack on another to go up two, but Chicago cuts it in half thanks to this blast from Seiya Suzuki. He sends one out to deep center for a solo shot. Cubs within one, but check this out. The Mets actually hold on. Ian Happ goes down swinging. Cubs fall 4-3. Brewers now two and a half games up on Chicago in the NL Central. Twins looking to get back in the win column last night against the Tigers. Detroit up two in the second. Been a tough year for Carlos Correa, but he gets all of this one to center. 14th of the year for Correa cuts the deficit to one. Then later in the inning, Another guy struggling at the plate, Joey Gallo with a man on. He obliterates this baseball. Monster two-run shot from Gallo. Puts the Twins on top, three to two. But then in the bottom of the inning, Riley Green delivers with runners on the corners. He goes back up the middle for a base hit. That ties the game at three. Still in the second, Matt Veerling at the dish. He's gonna untie it. Base hit in the left. That's gonna put the Tigers on top, four to three. And then in the fifth, Detroit adds some insurance. Spencer Torkelson going the other way to right. That one's not coming back. Solo shot makes it 5-3 Tigers. Twins fall for the second straight night, 9-5. Loggers are playoff bound. They were back at the Lumberyard taking on the team. They'll see in the playoffs, Eau Claire, LSU's Ethan Fry. 
with the play of the night. Great catch to rob an extra base hit. That keeps it scoreless. It would be that way until the eighth. Express finally get on the board. This one is flat out to right. Fry's got a cannon for an arm. Almost gets the runner at home, but Eau Claire breaks the scoreless tie. Loggers fall on this one by a final of one to nothing. That's gonna do it for the Blitz. We'll see you tonight. Thank you for watching News 8 Now. Expect more. A Minnesota man was sentenced to nearly 37 years for his role in a deadly mass shooting. Terry Brown was convicted last month of one count of second degree murder and four counts of attempted second degree murder. Nearly two years ago, he and Devondre Phillips started shooting at each other in a bar. One person was killed and 14 others were hurt. Brown apologized in court but said he was defending his life the night of the shooting. Last month, Phillips was sentenced to nearly 29 years for multiple attempted second-degree murder charges. A Minnesota state grant is helping more schools go green with new electric bus options. But how do these new electric buses compare to their diesel counterparts? Caroline Cummings reports from Maple Grove, Minnesota. <laughs> North Star Bus Lines fleet in Maple Grove got an electric upgrade last year as part of a pilot program by the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. The three it has serve students in the Osseo District. The grant provided an opportunity for us to not bear the full costs. Nick Martini, Senior Vice President of Operations, says the state funding, which comes from Minnesota's share of a national settlement with Volkswagen, goes a long way. You know, electric school buses right now are significantly more money. Uh, they're about four times the cost. He says the investment is worth it, but there's been a bit of a learning curve, especially as the state is only beginning to build out its EV infrastructure. It's more planning. Route selection is critical. Right now where we're at, this is fairly new for school bus, and so we have, we have to be careful about what routes we put it on. We know what our range is. We know, say, if it's 20 degrees below zero, that we're going to lose probably 10 to 15 percent of that range. The MPCA is now expanding the program so more schools can cash in, with grants of up to $300 $175,000. It's, it's just one of the tools in the toolbox to reduce transportation emissions. Transportation is the largest source of greenhouse gas emissions, and the agency estimates trading one diesel powered school bus for an EV can reduce that pollution by 29 tons. Supervisor Brian Timerson says school buses are a top target for the electric transition because they have a known route to and from a home base. The data is showing um, the, the range is acceptable, not for every bus route, but for probably many of the bus routes that, that a school district would have. The application deadline for the next round of grants closes next Tuesday. A new lawsuit filed in Wisconsin last week could transform the future of the state's legislature. The lawsuit asked the newly liberal-controlled state Supreme Court to get rid of Republican-drawn legislative maps. Law firms and voting rights advocacy groups came together to file the lawsuit. In it, the suit asks that all 132 state lawmakers be up for election in 24 and redrawn districts. That would include state senators who are not up until 2026. It's no secret organizations spend tons of money to get things they want done in government. At the halfway point of this year, the organization spending the most on lobbying is the Milwaukee Brewers. A nonpartisan report says the Brewers have spent $600,000 on efforts to get the state to pay for renovations to American Family Field. The franchise wants the state to kick in $400 million, but Milwaukee County leaders and Republican legislators are at odds over who pays for that. Before it funds a renovation, the state wants a commitment from the Brewers to extend its lease in Milwaukee. The Brewers' current lease expires in 2030. A Wisconsin Dells theme park is inviting thrill seekers to go where no water slide enthusiast has gone before. Mount Olympus has launched concept designs on the rise of Icarus. It will be the nation's tallest water slide at 145 feet. The $8 million project will include five new water slides and an outdoor children's play area. It's set to launch next summer. Now here's Derek to tell us what to expect for our morning commute. And Derek, I hear you're a fan of water slides and maybe we'll probably go on that Rise of Icarus one. Yeah, that sounds fun. 
Um, I know you're not big of, big into roller no. coasters, right? I'm, or I'm you're, you're, not, you're, not big into backwards. water slides. You're, you're not big into water slides, well, but. I also don't know how to swim. So. Yeah. Well, we got to get you to learn how to swim, Dua. That's I, an I don't skill. need to. Don't need to. <laughs> but when you learn how to swim, you can go on fun water slides. Or roller coasters. Well, roller coasters, you don't have to learn how to swim. Exactly. Yeah, but, uh, okay, well, <laughs> no, okay, we're, you're not going to get me in that. In that. we got to get you to learn how to swim, Dua. So water slides are fun. So visibility is looking a little bit low here this morning. Uh, it's going to clear out, though, as we head between 8 to 10 o'clock this morning as that fog clears out. Our current temperatures are into the 50s and 60s. 58 degrees in Sparta, 64 in La Crosse, 63 in Winona. 59 degrees the temperature now in Eau Claire. Uh, just a few passing clouds here to deal with this morning, but overall the forecast today just calls for a few clouds here later in the day with temperatures at 8 degrees. And overall slightly cooler behind that front. Light north northwest winds at 5 to 10 miles an hour. So for tonight, I'm watching for the chance of watching, you know, a few showers that could move through. Otherwise, it will turn cloudy nonetheless. 64 degrees east southeast winds at 5 to 10. And your mowing conditions this morning, 65 to start with some cloud with some cloudy skies. Then we turn mostly sunny through the rest of the day today with those temperatures into the 70s and 80s. So a nice day to mow the lawn if you haven't had a chance yet. I have another check or final check that is on your full weather forecast and I'll time out the fog here again. Plus what we could expect as we head into this weekend. Well, before we head to break, it's time for today's Look Who's 8. We'll start with Marilyn, who is turning 80 today. Now she enjoys participating in book club and volunteering and making memories with family. Ray is turning 88. He loves playing bingo, gardening, and going out to eat with friends and family. Well, if you know a special someone that is turning 8 weeks, 8 months, 8 years, 18, 80, or 88 years old soon, we'd love to feature them. Just upload their photo to our website, news8000.com, and look for the Submit Pictures button under the Home tab. Coming up, Cole Botwick from Ashley for the Arts is in studio to talk about their three-day music and art festival. Stay with us. We'll be right back. A little bit foggy out there in some spots this morning. That's why the visibilities here are looking a little bit low across portions of the Cooley region. So make sure to use your low beam headlights and get ready for here for that morning commute because uh, you may be needing that here this morning. Now visibility tracker showing all the fog outside now. I'm expecting this to clear on out of here anywhere between around 8 to 10 o'clock this morning and that will be done here after that and then skies will then turn mostly sunny later in the day. We'll get to that in a second. 64 degrees and wind speeds are looking calm now in La Crosse. Meanwhile for you in Eau Claire, we're currently sitting at 59 degrees and wind speeds are looking calm here as well. Current temperatures as you head out the door are into the 50s and 60s, 58 degrees in Sparta, 60 in Viroqua, and in Winona you're currently at 63 degrees. As far as your day planner goes, we start off mostly cloudy and a bit foggy out there with temperatures mainly in the 60s, warming up into the 70s under mostly sunny skies by noon, 4 o'clock mostly sunny with temperatures at around 80 degrees and partly cloudy 75 degrees as we near the 8 o'clock hour here this evening. So over the last 12 hours, uh, we had that front to move through yesterday. It did bring us some showers, even a couple rumbles of thunder here, as you can see, mainly during the evening hours as it moved through. That front is now positioned mainly off to our south here, and it will continue to remain nearly stationary over the next few days. And there you can see that frontal boundary now positioned to the south of us. We have a light northerly wind breeze behind the front, and that is allowing our temperatures this afternoon to be a little cooler than what we've been seeing the last few days, upper 70s to low 80s as a result of being on the backside now that front which continues again to move towards the south. Just a few passing clouds for the rest of the day today will increase those clouds though as we head into tonight as that frontal boundary remains nearly stationary and also I'm watching an upper level disturbance to our west which may give us a chance of some showers also to work with as we head into tomorrow morning. Now as we head into tomorrow afternoon that activity clears out mostly sunny for tomorrow afternoon. I am watching another upper level disturbance moving in from the west that combined with that frontal boundary remaining nearly stationary could set off more showers and even possible strong to severe storms at times as well. So we'll keep our eyes on that heading into tomorrow evening. Tomorrow night though things will clear out and I do expect the rest of your day on Saturday to be nice with that northwest flow there. A slight chance of a shower also possible towards the Chippewa Valley heading into your Saturday afternoon also into the evening and then clearing out of here by Saturday night. So if you have plans here Saturday night things are definitely looking nice. Here's a check on your eight day forecast and you can see that we will be looking at highs into the 80s there. More rain chances could be on the way as we head into Sunday and then once again as we head into early next week on Monday.
Oh, we're doing a tour of oh, the station. Oh, I gotta love station. that uh, tour. <laughs> Ooh, there goes the camera. And here, here we, we are. are. <laughs> well, this morning we have Cole Bowick with us. Cole, uh, you're the executive director of Ashley for the Arts. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what is Ashley for the Arts? Yeah, so Ashley for the Arts is a nonprofit music and arts festival. And it was established back in 2009, and it's actually one of Wisconsin's largest charity events. Last year alone, we were able to generate over $650,000 that supported over 70 nonprofit organizations. So we're really excited about this year. What makes this so special to you, you think? Yeah, I think, you know, from, from when it was established as kind of a local festival, we have a beautiful 54-acre park in Arcadia, Wisconsin. And we just really wanted to highlight some of the attributes at Memorial Park. And we started off small, and we had some local bands that were coming in, and some local artisans. And it's just grown since there. And, and uh, you know, one of the things that we absolutely love is how much money we're actually able to generate as a nonprofit organization to support over those 70 nonprofits. Sometimes I'm still really surprised at some of the headliners that do come, considering it started with like local bands. Yep. And last year I was there, you guys had Brooks and Dunn, and they were <laughs> phenomenal. And you have One Republic this year. Kind of how does that work, you know, booking those big name headliners? Yeah, so I mean, we're booking year in advance. I mean, we're already looking at 2024. But, you know, some of the bands that we've been able to get, you know, we have a great booking agent, and we're always looking at. Um, trying to have a mixed genre festival and that's something that makes us unique over a lot of other music and arts festivals as well because we're not just one genre so we always try to look into bands that will you know country that goes into pop or rock or something like that and they'll pair well together so it's something that the whole family can come to enjoy especially since everybody has different tastes. Um, now speaking of like tickets can where can people buy tickets and can they buy tickets the day of as well? Yeah, so you can currently get your tickets right now online at ashleyforthearts.com. Otherwise, you can always get them at the gates. So right now, they're $45 online. They'll be $50 at the gate. Uh, so whatever uh, you'd like to do, we'll be able to get you that ticket. And where do the proceeds go to? Yeah, so the proceeds go to those 70 nonprofit organizations, the majority of which are area school districts. So there, we have a lot of school districts and organizations that come, they volunteer and help put on this festival. It actually takes over 4,000 volunteer shifts wow. to put on Ashley for the Arts. So it's a lot of coordination, yeah. but it really makes it a community event. You know, everybody takes pride in Ashley for the Arts because they're, uh, you know, bringing it together and they're setting it up and they're tearing it down, and uh, it's just a great way to support them. Now, there's it's not just the music, but there's a lot of local booths and mm -hmm. people selling arts and jewelry and, you know, other things. Can you tell me a little bit about that part of the festival? Yeah, so we have over 100 art and craft fair vendors, and it can be local artisans or it can be people that are coming from all over the Midwest or even further than that, but they're selling their products. So if you want to come early and you want to buy something, we actually have a storage unit that you can put it in so you're not walking around all day with <laughs> yeah. it. That's convenient. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we also have interactive art. So we have a artist, uh, we have a artist that will actually teach you how to paint. So oh, you cool. can sign up for Cheers Pablo and they'll do like a little drawing of a previous scene from Ashley for the Arts and they'll teach you how to paint it. Uh, there's a lot of things for the children's activities, family fun zone area. You know, we have a, a petting zoo, an inflatable air park. We have a wheel of death and a lumberjack show and circus entertainers that, yes. that go oh all gosh. around the whole ground. So right when you step in the gates, you should find something that really entertains you. And real quickly, where can people find more information? Because we have to go to break soon. Yeah, so you can find information at ashleyforthearts.com. Check out all of our parking lots and, and how to go about, um, you know, getting to Ashley for the Arts. And there's a great FAQ section. So if you're looking at, uh, you know, any questions that you may have about our rent, you can find it there. Right, thank um, you. Just wrapping up, parking. I know that's a big yes. concern. Is that free and is there for a parking space available? Yeah, so we have some local landowners that, that uh, donate their land that we're able to park at. So parking is free and we have free bus shuttles that will bring you uh, to the Ashley for the Arts ground on a continual basis. So you never have to worry about waiting very long to get to the gates. And Excellent. definitely lots of foods and drinks. Yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. Right, okay. yeah. Well, thank you so much thank for coming so much. and yeah. talking to us about this. Cole, stay with us. We have everything you need to know today. In five minutes or less, your morning news now is up next. On your morning news now, we have an update on emergency water line repairs on La Crosse's 4th Street that started on Tuesday. A water valve from 1925 malfunctioned, causing emergency repairs that forced parts of 4th Street to go down to one lane. 
The nearly 100 year old valve shuts off water, but yesterday it would not completely close. That's according to Pete Mettinger, the city's interim assistant water distribution superintendent. The malfunction caused damage to a basement. Crews had to dig down to the water main for the emergency repairs. Mettinger says the work on the valve will end today. A new lawsuit filed in Wisconsin last week could transform the future of the state's legislature. The lawsuit asked the newly liberal-controlled state Supreme Court to get rid of Republican-drawn legislative maps. Law firms and voting rights advocacy groups came together to file the lawsuit. In it, the suit asks that all 132 state lawmakers be up for election in 2024 in redrawn districts. That would include state senators who are not up until 2026. The La Crosse School District is officially inviting bids for the now-closed Lincoln Middle School building. Organizations can start submitting requests for proposals to buy and redevelop the 100-year-old building. Last month, the city's Common Council upheld the building's historic preservation status, which would restrict how some developers could go about a redevelopment project. The school district's goal is to sell to a qualified developer who reflects the community's priorities. Proposals are due September 20th. We'll have information on where and how to send proposals on our app, news8000.com. The Cooley Region Humane Society is hosting its 19th annual Adopt-a-Thon until the end of the month to find both foster and forever homes for local animals. Adopters can name their own adoption fee of $5 or more for all animals available at the Cooley Region Humane Society. There are currently 300 animals in their care. Space may be at a premium, but CRHS is committed to not euthanizing animals because of space. The executive director is hopeful for a sizable turnout. We're super hopeful that we get um, at least 30 yet this week adoptions, or at least plans for adoption to start off next week. Um, really looking forward to the public support in this. In past years, the Adopt-a-Thon ran for only a few days to a week but with a high number of animals in need of adoption, the Humane Society is extending the event. If you are interested in applying to adopt a pet from them, we will have a link on our News 8000 app. And it's a bit foggy out there this morning. That fog should clear here in the next couple of hours. I'm expecting that temperatures will be into the 60s through 9 o'clock under partly to mostly cloudy skies. And then skies will turn mostly sunny through the rest of the day with afternoon highs into the upper 70s to low 80s. I check now on your eight-day forecast here as we head into the day tomorrow. I'm watching for a chance of showers and thunderstorms. Showers during the morning and then thunderstorms as we head into tomorrow evening. We'll keep our eyes on that for possible strong to severe weather. But then for Saturday, mostly sunny. Chances of rain storm Sunday and then again on Monday next week. Highs in the 80s, lows 50s, 60s. Overall, mostly clear, especially yeah. for that Ashley for the Arts weekend exactly. that starts tonight, yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, do you plan on going? Uh, yes, if I have time. Ah, <laughs> uh, Derek, come on, you always have to find time. Yeah, I know. It's early on this shift, you know, I just want to go home It's and sleep. Saturday night. Yeah. Well, the true. main the main event, the headliners, One Republic, they're Saturday night. Oh, okay. Do sure. you know a One Republic song, Derek? No. Well, maybe. No, don't, don't know the name. Oh, God. All right. Bye, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you for watching News 8 Now. We'll see you later here today on News 8 Now at noon. Oh, have... that's right. We do have a noon show. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. He's ready for the weekend. We'll see you this noon. Have a wonderful <laughs> Thursday morning.